Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and in this video, I'm going to show you the circuit that's behind the power supply of my hot wire foam cutter. It's fairly simple, we just have a few basic components. We've got a push on off style dimmer switch, we've got a transformer, a fuse, and several different uh, output methods. So the way this works is I cut the cord off an uh, old extension cord, cut the female end off, and wired the hot side into my push on off style dimmer. Now it's really important that this be a push on off style dimmer because I screwed up when I made it the first time and I had the rotary kind where you had to dial all the way back to zero to turn it off. Well that's really inconvenient because you lose your heat setting every time you want to turn the thing on and off. So this way I set it right where I want it and then just tap it on and off to turn it on and off. So then coming out of the dimmer switch I stop at my transformer. Now I use an electronic instead of a magnetic transformer. They work a little bit differently but for what I'm doing it's uh, it's good enough. It's the same thing. I used an SL-728 150 watt transformer. If you Google these, they're like 10 bucks. Uh, that's what I was able to find locally, so that's what I ended up using. They're smaller, cheaper, and lighter weight than the magnetic style usually. This one's typically used in lighting applications. It's rated uh, 150 watts at 12 volts on this side, so uh, 12 volts is pretty safe, so I had no trouble there. Coming out of this, on the secondary side of my transformer, I run into a 10 amp fuse. Now, 150 watts at 12 volts means this is going to output 12 and a half amps. I put a 10 amp fuse in so that I have a 2 and a half amp safety margin. It's a lot easier to replace fuses than it is transformers. It's a lot cheaper too. So, coming out of the fuse, now I have three different output methods. My first one was just uh, alligator clips on the end of a cut extension cord. So I have those. I also have a set of binding posts where I can put in bare wires or banana plugs. And then I did something special here. My third output is a standard outlet. Now, most outlets have the top and bottom outlets electrically connected. But if you look closely, there's a little tab right by each of the screw terminals. And if you snap that tab on each side, it electrically separates the two outlets. So that's what I did because I wanted different outputs for each one. To the top outlet, I'm running my 12 volts uh, with 10 amp fuse connection. On the bottom outlet, I'm just running 120 volts, but it's controlled by my dimmer switch. So I tap into the bottom one before I go through my transformer, whereas the top outlet is connected after my fuse on the secondary side of the transformer. Uh, and then everything, of course, you know, runs back in down into the wall. It's fairly simple. So a lot of people I've seen online say, well, you got to use AC, you got to use DC. I'm here to tell you it really doesn't matter. Just make sure that on your secondary side you use a voltage that's you know, generally safe. 12 volts is usually fine. I uh, don't have excessive amperage, so I'm okay there. Another thing to note is the fuse is on the secondary side or the load side of my transformer because it's, well, that's what determines what your transformer is going to put out first off. But it's also much easier to find fuses in the range of 0 to 12 and a half amps than it is to find fuses in the 0 to 1.25 amp range because the transformer will change your voltage. Oh, power has to stay constant, so if voltage goes down, amperage has to go up. It'd be really, really difficult to find fuses that go in usable increments from 0 to 1.25. But, you know, fuses easily come in half amp, quarter amp increments all the way up, so I can put any kind of fuse in here as long as it's standard 12 and a half, then I'll be okay. I hope that kind of helps explain things a little bit. Hopefully now you can go uh, improve upon it on your own. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.